Hello and welcome to another edition of Communication Connection. I'm Terry Likes. This is a program that focuses on the accomplishments and achievements of students, faculty, and alumni involved with the Department of Communication. And one of the components that we have within our department that we're very excited about is our speech and debate team. And joining us today is the coach, faculty member, and director, whatever title we want to have. You wear many hats within the department, but joining us is Cheryl Chambers. Cheryl, thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me. What a lot of people don't know is, one, we do know you've had a lot of success, but the team hasn't been around that long, really only about five years. So how did this all come about? Right, so we did have a team many, many years ago, back in the 60s, and there's not really been a team that's flourished since then. Uh, but about five years ago, and before that, I was involved with the student chapter of the NAACP, mm -hmm. and several of those students used to be involved in speech and debate back in high school, and they came to me and said, we should start a team, and it seemed like a good idea, so we got that ball rolling. Well, that's great. Now, another interesting component is speech and debate is not really in your background. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about your background and then how all of this came about as to how you got more involved. Right. So I've always been interested in communication, obviously. My degrees are in communication, but the schools that I went to also didn't have speech and debate programs because I went to Mississippi State. I was born and raised here in Startful, went to Mississippi State for my bachelor's degree. So I'm very much a Startful, girl, I'm very much a bulldog, um, but I do have an interest in public speaking. I've always been really fascinated by that process and helping students overcome a fear that often is associated with public speaking. So I feel like the connection is there between what is, happens on a competitive team and the background that I already have in the area. Well, it has to feel great, as you mentioned, being a hometown girl and being able to build something from scratch and, and, and have it come to fruition and actually have real success that, that you can point toward. Right. So being in school here, I actually thought that it would be fun to join a speech and debate team, but it wasn't an option and I didn't know what process it might be to do that. Mm -hmm. So to now have fulfilled maybe a dream I had as a younger person is very fulfilling. Well, that's great. Being on the team not only requires participating at tournaments, but there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes. There's right. a, the preparation, the nights, the weekends, the tournament travel. There's really a lot involved. These students don't get enough credit for what they do. These are really some of the most ambitious young people that I've ever met. They spend hours and hours practicing here in town while we're getting ready for tournaments. The tournaments themselves can be very overwhelming that you're there all weekend, you're getting home at 2 a.m. and then you're waking up for an 8 a.m. exam. A lot of these students are honor students. They're taking 18 hours. They're involved in other organizations. So the commitment that it takes to be successful on this team or even to be a part of the team really is commendable and that's really all the students. Now you're hosting a tournament here on campus, but yes. where will the students be traveling this semester? So, so far we've already traveled regionally to, we've been to Tennessee, we've been to Louisiana, uh, we've been a little bit in Mississippi itself. Um, so we'll have a tournament here. We'll travel a little bit more to some of those nearby states. As far as national tournaments or those bigger tournaments, we've gone places like California or Colorado or Pennsylvania. So really, when you get up to the bigger level, you could go anywhere. Well, tell us about some of the tournament success you've had in, the, in recent years. Right, so we really have been doing a good job from day one, uh, the students really just got into it and knew what they wanted to do and had success. But we've obviously seen that success grow over the years. Uh, we often do very well at regional tournaments, getting some of the highest honors. Some of our most recent accolades that we're quite proud of is last year, one of our students is third in the nation for, uh, yes, there are some of our trophies. Uh, you can see that we've got, and there's more than that. There's a whole second case that now exists <laughs> in the department that's filling up. Uh, so one of our students was third in the nation in debate, Tyler Melvin, and that's out of hundreds and hundreds of students that could be in that position. Additionally, on the speech side, we had a student, Maggie Bridges, who got to quarterfinals at nationals, which on the speech side, which arguably is more competitive, was a, a really big deal for us. Well, congratulations. What is an ultimate goal then for the team? You, you've built it this far and had initial success. So we are in the top 10 of 
debate programs in the nation. And I think we have a goal of maybe in five years getting into the top five, maybe sooner than that. I think one day we'd love to see ourselves being the top in the nation. But really at the end of the day, I wanna go back and say, my ultimate goal is to do what the students wanna do. If the students want to gear more towards working on campus with students as opposed to being less competitive, then I want to push them towards what their goals are. So really my goal is what their goal is. Well, and you alluded to this, that wh whatever student organization that is happens to be, yes. we as faculty might want something to happen, but unless it bubbles up from the ground up with the students really wanting to make it happen, exactly. that's the best way to have it happen. And then we can provide the guidance as you're doing in this case. Exactly, they're the ones that have to do all of the work. So I want to encourage them to follow whatever path they think is best for them in their college career, in their future career, so hopefully it will be that they want to continue to compete, but uh, we'll, we'll just see what trend goes. Luckily for you, you're not the only one participating and helping work with the students. In this case, you've got a partner in crime, so to speak, uh, a guy named Brett Harvey who yes. works here on campus. Tell us a little bit about Brett and that partnership and his contributions. It was very fortuitous that Brett and I met. It just happened to be at the same time that my students were talking about starting a speech team that he was asking around about if we had a debate team. He has lots of experience in the debate world. He's been doing it since he was a young person, since a teenager. And he's seen here on the left in this photo. Yes, and this was from, uh, this was the staff of our high school tournament that you see on the screen that we hold on campus every year, Cowbell Classic. I think that was our first year holding it actually. He is just an invaluable part of the team. He has so much knowledge and so much background and the students really trust him and respect him. And I really feel that a lot of our success, a lot of our student success is because of the guidance that he's provided. And his background is more in a legal background. So yes. he brings that expertise, you bring the communication expertise. So it exactly. seems like a good fit. Right, between the communication skills and the argumentation skills, I really do feel we have a strong team in that way. Well, we appreciate him being involved Absolutely. with the team mentioned uh, communication mm -hmm. and the department has five concentrations right. so you've got people studying in print and broadcast digital areas uh, theater public relations and then you're in the communication studies yes. area uh, but for students being involved in the speech and debate team it's not just for majors you have <coughs> excuse me a variety of students from all over campus right so it is not limited in any way we have students from all over engineering business um, political science just about any major we've had come through at some point and I really feel that the skills that they're getting in speech and debate translates to just about any major and just about any career path Anyone who is trying to get out into the real world and be successful has to be able to communicate with others, has to be able to come up with a good argument, has to have those critical on your feet thinking skills. So I think that what they're forced to do in a competitive setting is just making them better for the workforce or wherever it is that they see themselves in the future, regardless of their major. Mm -hmm. And I think to build upon that, this, this type of activity and these tournaments and the preparation mm -hmm. helps them have these aspirations, many of them, for example, want to go to law school, things yes. of that sort. Right, so our students are extremely ambitious. As far as ones that we've had that have graduated, they're in law school, they're in medical school, they're working in DC, they're in grad school. Almost all of our graduates are off doing something really important and, and it's good to see that they are using the skills they developed on the team in order to be more successful in those paths. So you have some tournaments coming up this yes. semester. Tell us, you know, break it down a little further okay. when when students compete, what are the categories? How does this process sure. work? So in a general sense, there's speech and debate. On the debate side, you are paired with someone else from another school and you'll be given a topic, you'll have to come up with an argument and there is that clash with the other student that can make it a little bit maybe more nerve wracking in the moment. On the speech side, the students are preparing speeches in advance before we go to a tournament, researching, constructing their argument, memorizing, and then performing in front of a judge. So there really is advantages to both types of events and students can sometimes do both, but they often will find them that they fit more in one or the other, but both of them I feel have the ability to help students learn those skills that are gonna benefit them in their classroom or in their future careers. And so when the team goes on the road, uh, one of the ultimate goals would be one of the national tournaments, which yes. typically come up April, which is near the end of the spring semester. Right. So ha have we had students compete at that level? Do you anticipate some this year? Yes. 
So we have had students go to national tournaments for the last several years. On the debate side, we already are predicting to have four or five students that will go to Nashville, which is where debate nationals is being held this year. And that's convenient. And then we also <laughs> already have a few students who have qualified on the speech side to go to California for our speech nationals. Okay, well that's wonderful. Yes. So you mentioned the, the national rankings and, and that we're doing quite well within yes. this you know, five year startup exactly. plan. So uh, what, what do you see as, as next for the team? Well, I, I do believe that we will continue to be a competitive team and I think we'll continue to get better. I think one thing that we would like to see is a little bit more involvement on campus. There's so many students who will never really necessarily fit in a competitive speech environment, but would absolutely benefit from the types of skills that our students are gaining in practices and that type of thing. So we really would like to try to help general students on campus develop more of their public speaking skills, their argumentation skills. So to find a way to try to have that service component on campus I think is a good goal for us. We also would like to see maybe starting some high school teams in rural areas. I know that Brett really would like to see us try to have that outreach component to our team. Do you have kind of a, a grooming component of younger students? I'll, I'll use an athletic example, you know, sure. a starter on a football or a basketball team, junior or senior year but they might not play as much freshman and sophomore. Does it work that way in speech and debate? It can. So if a student's coming straight from a speech and debate program in high school then they often have the skills to go straight into competition. But we have a lot of students who are coming to us with absolutely no experience and so coming to practices and learning the process is good. One of the things that we often have new students do is come and judge for us. We always need mm -hmm. judges at tournaments and judging is one of the best ways that you can really get exposed to the event without actually having to uh, participate in the event itself. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, you've been involved in this and we certainly appreciate all of your efforts. What is next for you? What would you like to be doing and or involved with speech and debate? Sure. Well, hopefully still this, hopefully still here at Mississippi State, still in the department, still working with the team and hopefully growing the team into more of the service component I mentioned before. I'd really like for us to have an ability to mentor students and tutor students in the skills that they are shaky in, which is often public speaking. And so I'd really like to see the team itself grow more into an organization that not only is going in to compete, but is helping students on campus and maybe even community members or faculty members with any sort of insecurities they're having in their public speaking skills as well. And one of the things you kind of alluded to is more of a campus component. And yes. I, I do know that at least in development, there are talks about creating an MSU speaking center, yes. which would be similar to some of the other academic centers on campus, like the writing center and so forth. So maybe all of that can involve and the speech and debate team can have a service component and, yes. and so forth. So Cheryl, we certainly appreciate your time here today on this program and enlightening us more about the speech and debate team. And we wish you continued success. Thank Thanks for joining so us. Okay, thank you and thank you for watching this edition of Communication Connection. Please join us next time.